All right, I want to do a little bit of a quick update or um, follow up on that unboxing of the General Kinetics 300-300 cam. Um, when I made my first video, I uh, couldn't see the numbers on the end of the camshaft. So I wanted to show you guys what you can do with a little bit of chalk and a razor blade. If you'll look at the end of this camshaft, you'll see C1H300U, C1H300U, and the way you highlight those numbers is you rub chalk on the end of the cam, then do not be tempted. If you, if you wipe it with your fingers or a rag, it always pulls the chalk out of the um, engraving or the indentions on the end of the cam. So basically, I take a razor blade like I rub the end of the, you know, I color the end of the cam where I'm trying to read the part number. Then I gently scrape off the excess with a razor blade. And that'll highlight the numbers that you can't see with your naked eye. Um, when you're 48 years old, you apparently can't see where the crap. So this is a really good tip. So C1H300U. Um, I forget off the top of my head, but C is for Chevrolet, the H is for hydraulic, 300 is the um, duration on the cam, U indicates that it was uh, ground from original master, like it means that it's ground to original master lobe specifications. That one in between the C and the H right now escapes me, I can't remember what that breaks down to. But this is, in fact, the 509-509 advertised 300-300 cam. Um, if you'll look right here on the table, you'll see sidewalk chalk. All that chalk you bought for your kids that, you know, they either used, didn't use, left in the driveway. Snag a piece of it. Hold on to it in your toolbox. Use it for when you got to color part numbers on engine blocks, cylinder heads, uh, machinist stamps, camshafts, whatever. You know, put a little bit of uh, chalk down in the indentions, scrape it gently with a razor blade, bang, you're good to go. But I was looking at the cam card. Apparently, these older cam cards, adjust you guys just a hair. The older cam cards didn't give you lobe lift. Like apparently I had forgotten about that or maybe back in those days I was young and didn't care or didn't know. But the cam cards back then gave you your lash if you had some. Of course hydraulics don't have a lash. Then they gave you your uh, 50 thousandths tap it ride, like your cam timing events, which comes in very handy especially the ABDC number because that you will have to have your ABDC number if you're doing your online calculators for your dynamic compression ratio. A lot of people don't realize uh, your static compression ratio when you know when you hear people say well, I have a 10 to 1 350 or 11 to 1 or 9 to 1 whatever they're you know that's not a true representation of what the engine's compression is because your static compression is a it's a nominal number like it's a kind of like a base you're like okay my cylinder bore is this the piston sits uh, 15 thousandths in the hole uh, my gasket thickness is 40 thousandths my chambers are 62 thousand you know 62 cc and bam it gives you a static compression number a lot of people get confused on this and they use that to kind of dictate what kind of power they're going to make and what kind of fuel their engine is going to need to run on. But when you start calculating uh, dynamic compression ratio, it takes it a step farther. Because your camshaft is so important in creating compression, managing compression, bleeding off compression if you have a really uh, large cam with a significant amount of overlap all of these factors can change the required fuel that an engine 
will need to run on a given compression ratio. Well, when you calculate your dynamic compression ratio, they're gonna take your static, add in some more information, your density altitude, your ABDC, ABDC number, some of them call it, have it listed as ABC or ADC. Just remember it's the one that starts, uh, it's at the bottom, it's gonna be a like a 40, I wanna say like high 40s through 60 or 70. Some of the old school cams had like 78, they had crazy numbers, but look at your ABDC number, entered into your dynamic compression calculator. Um, as an example, my, oh, my old cam, or my cam, it's in my blazer right now, that engine has a 9.42 to one static compression ratio, but that crazy old school cam that bleeds off fuel, uh, cylinder pressure when you do the dynamic compression, running compression on it, it's only 7.71. So think about that. You go from a, oh, I got a nine, nine and a half to one motor, but when you put that particular camshaft that I have in there, the dynamic drops down to 7.7. .7. You can run 87 octane gas in that motor and you're not gonna have a problem because that motor's not making enough compression to require higher octane fuel. The downside of that is it doesn't make very much power. When you start dropping your dynamic that low, you're, you're compromising. You're making it where you can run cheap, you know, what they call pump piss gas in your engine. But the sacrifice is you're going to have to rev the crap out of it to make any power. Or you're going to have to put some nitrous on it. So, which absolutely explains why my engine loved the nitrous so much when we took it to the track. I mean, you know, my motor with that stupid 7.7 to 1 dynamic compression, it only ran 890s in the eighth mile on the motor. Introduced 120, it's like 125 or 135 shot of nitrous. That thing dropped down to a 790 in the eighth mile, which is like, 1250 or faster equivalent in the quarter which is really good for how little built that motor is but getting off topic a little bit so anyway I wanted to show you guys these numbers because I did a little measuring just real quick but if you'll look at the top of this paper you have my little scribbled lobe and if you look at the nominal the nominal width or size of the bottom or the heel of the lobe. Then you'll also measure from the center of your heel to, this is the tricky part, from the heel, center of the heel to the center of the absolute highest point of the peak of the lobe. That's what I call your max lobe height. So remember, you're gonna measure your heel, which is the part of the lobe that doesn't introduce any lift, which we call nominal. Then you just measure, which it takes a little finagling, and I may have done it really fast, but I tried to get it as close as I could so I could make the video. Uh, nominal size, then your max lobe height, center to center, and I mean center of the heel to center of the absolute highest point on that lobe peak. What you'll do is subtract your nominal figure from your max on this cam, it was uh, max lift from the center of the heel to the center of the peak was 1.511, one, 511 thousandths, whereas the part of the lobe that did not introduce any lift was 1.174. Subtract that out, and the lobe lift is 337 thousandths. Okay, now if you'll look, I took a 1.5 rocker ratio and multiplied it by my lobe lift, which gave me a valve lift of, five, of 505 and a half thousandths. I could be off slightly on my max lift, and that's be, or my, my max lobe measurement, because you have to literally play with it. And I didn't really take a whole crap load of time. I just did a real quick measurement on it so I could do a video. But the cam card said it was uh, supposed to be a 509 lift. So basically I'm missing like three and a half thousandths of an inch. 
which very, it could be operator error. Like we'll throw that in as our variance on my ability to eyeball the uh, middle of the heel and the absolute peak of the load. But you know, we're looking at almost 506 thousandths, or I'm sorry, 506 lift with a 1.5 rocker, which that's fine. I know that this is the cam. The lobe is providing the lift that it's supposed to. So I just wanted you guys to kind of see how that works, where you can take a hydraulic camshaft. I've never personally tried it on a roller lobe, but it should work exactly the same because you're going to have the heel of the lobe that doesn't introduce lift, and then you're going to have the peak and the bottom of the heel. So all your measurements would work exactly the same. You just deduct your nominal from your max lobe height. That gives you your lobe lift. Multiply it by your rocker ratio, and there you go. That'll give you your max valve lift. Now that's going to be your gross because if you have a mechanical camshaft that requires some kind of um, valve lash, valve lash is deducted from your max gross. So, of course, that's a different topic, and I can get off get off get off topic really fast. So, anyway, I wanted you guys to see that I looked up that C1H300U, and it is in fact the General Kinetics 300-300 cam. I wanted to show you how I checked just really fast the lobe to verify it was the lift that I was expecting it to be. And I believe that this is the camshaft that I uh, purchased. The part numbers match up to what they're supposed to. So I feel like I got my, what I paid for. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this little bit of information and math and just shade tree mechanics pays off for somebody so you can make some horsepower. Thanks for watching.